Hi guys, this is Kathy coming to you from the North Carolina Zoo with Wild About Nature. We're going to make a sensory rich um, activity today. It's sensory rich. It has to do with two tree products, applesauce and cinnamon. We're going to mix the two in equal amounts and bake them. And when we get through, we're going to have ornaments. Now, these could be they don't have to be a holiday thing that you hang on a tree. They could just be decorations, like this is an acorn shape. So in the fall, you can make a garland out of them, um, paint them with different colors, put people's names on them, even take an acorn and make the imprint, um, you know, because the, the cap of the acorn has bumpy texture. So you can do that when you're ready for the decoration stage. Or you could make it holiday-ish, you know, with stars and, and a little glitter glue paint. Different ways you can decorate them. But first, we gotta mix our two ingredients, both of which come from trees. As you know, applesauce comes from apples. And did you know, cinnamon is actually tree bark. There's a group of trees, they don't grow around here, in the cinnamon family, and this is from their bark. So, not good to consume in mass quantities. We're gonna use it for our craft. So, equal amounts. I've got a one-third measuring cup, so I'm just going to use that. So I'm going to one-third cup of applesauce. Oh, plenty left to snack on later. And then I'm going to need one-third cup of cinnamon, which will mean that this was not going to be tasty once we mix it. But it's good for making a craft. It's fun to kind of smell the cinnamon. Nice sensory experience, like I said. Now, oh yeah, got a big whiff of it. Don't know if you've ever taken aspirin for a headache before. That's made from tree bark too. Trees do a lot of wonderful things for us. I'm messy. Sorry, guys. <laughs> you don't have to be as messy as I am. All right, so what we're getting, it's kind of a weird texture, but we want to be able to make it, sort of make it into a dough. So I may need, I don't know, if I can't make a ball out of this, I may need a teeny tiny bit more applesauce since it's the wet part. But we'll see. Every time I make this stuff, it's a little bit different. Almost looks like I'm making a mud pie. And I love making mud pies. That's a great sensory experience. And I pretend to eat mud concoctions all the time. Because you know what? It's healthy to pretend. It's good for our mental health. Doesn't matter what age we are. Play is important. Not just for humans. Animals play too. That's how little animals learn how to be big animals. We have a sand cat kitten right now at the, at the zoo in our desert exhibit. And I'm going to tell you, it plays all the time. And mama sand cat plays too. And normally before a kitten came along, we didn't ever see her playing very much, but she knows that is how her kitten is going to learn to be a cat, is through her and play. All right, see, I looks like I've got a great mud ball. Now I could throw it on my target. No, no, no. This is my applesauce and cinnamon craft. Now, I have a silicone pad because you know with me being, being messy. I'm putting it down on that. I'm kind of patting it out, making a bigger mud pie thing here. But before I roll it with my rolling pin, crucial thing, because this is, you see what's doing in my hands, right? It's going to do that to the rolling pin. And that's not going to be fun. It's going to be too messy. Too messy for me. So I'm using some parchment paper. Parchment paper is one of the greatest cooking inventions of all time. Because you can actually cook what cook. You can put it in the oven under a certain temperature. 
it's compostable, and it keeps my applesauce dough from sticking to my roller pin. It's great. If you don't have parchment paper, but you got wax paper, pretty much do the same thing. Um, and you can use plastic wrap for covering. Can't cook it, though. But now I've got my parchment paper on my little, looks like a big old mud pie. I'm just going to flatten out my concoction here. Okay. Now I am ready to make some shapes. So I've got my uh, cookie cutter here. Hey, and if you don't have cookie cutters, it's no biggie. You could take a glass upside down and make circles and then put thumbprints in them. You could take nature things and put imprints there. But I'm going to make a star, see if it'll come out for me. This is the tricky part because this dough sometimes is kind of tricky. But I'm going to see. I'm going to see if I can get a star to come out of here. Oh, you guys hear that in the background? There's a woodpecker clucking at me. We have a suet feeder here at the end of the treetop trail. This is not going to want to be nice, I don't think. Oh, maybe, maybe, maybe. Okay. And he's clucking at me. He wants to get to the suet feeder. I'm not crazy about people being out here near his, his bird feeder. All right, we have a star. Not perfect. But you know what? It doesn't have to be. There we go. This is my cookie sheet because we're going to have to bake these to make them work, to make them hard so they're not like gooky forever. So, grown up please, preheat your oven to 200 degrees. They're going to need to cook in a 200 degree oven for two hours. So grown up, set your timer. Definitely need a grown up for this part of the activity. And lots of patience for getting the shapes and some, someone was asking me, can you cook parchment paper? You can. So you know what? Making the shape on top of the parchment paper and lifting the parchment paper and putting that in the cookie sheet I think is a smart idea. So I think I'm going to try that. You can cook parchment paper in the oven. Where's the degrees? Up to 425 degrees. So since we're only cooking at 200, we can actually make our shape on the parchment, cook it on there so it doesn't get all messed up. Let me make my big dough ball again. Lay some parchment down. Put this on top of it. Got another piece over here. Here we go. Roll it out a bit. Yes, so I'm going to take that piece off. But I'm going to leave it on that. So. Maybe my star will be prettier. Maybe. Maybe if I do this. Here we go. Yeah. All right. Getting all the extra stuff out of there before I lift it. There we go. All right. All right, now we have a star, and we can just place them in there like that. All right, so after your two hours, make sure you turn your oven off. They're going to look like this. This was a smaller star to begin with. Um, and then once they're nice and cooled off, then you can decorate them if you like. You can leave them natural or you could paint them, decorate them. Um, and you want to make sure, see this one didn't get a hole in it. This one got a hole in it. We used a straw to make a hole um, so that you can thread some string or yarn or twine through there for hanging. It makes really cute gingerbread people too. Um, like I said, you can make a garland out of them. You could use heart-shaped cookie cutters for Valentine's garlands, things like that. But there you go. Keep on having fun and play outside.